Hey y'all, welcome back. Well, we're back and unpacked from the 10 Deer uh, Expo, the Rendezvous down in Lebanon, Tennessee. It's a good show. But this video here is going to be directed towards the new King of Bucks collection. We had the pleasure of seeing the world's largest six-pointer, which is actually the world record six-pointer, several really unique bucks, but one buck in particular that is the world record by Buckmaster world record. The reason it's not Boone and Crockett world record is because it has one tine, which is actually it's G3 on the right side, that they would not, they did not want the trouble of letting that buck in due to what it might open up for other people that might bring heads similar to it. So they would not let it go as a typical. So anyway, the buck is now on display it's taken everywhere around the world and we got the pleasure of actually getting to hold it so y'all stay right here and uh listen to what this guy has to say uh he's got some pretty cool stories behind the bucks that uh that he had at this show good morning everybody we're here at the tennessee outdoor rendezvous and beer classic I brought my collection, the New Legends collection of whitetails with me. Let's get started. I'll introduce you to some of these animals. This deer was found dead in Pennsylvania. What it grew on its head, nobody seems to know. It just grew this big growth, it grew into the eye socket until it was a young deer by the size of the skull. But um, I put a thing online, Facebook, and I said, let's have a competition. Who can name this deer and give it its nickname? And the person that won was out of Kansas, and we decided to call him Don King, the, the, the boxing promoter with the big high hair. Well, this is Don King. This deer here I haven't named yet. This is a found dead out of Des Moines, Iowa. Just another freak of nature. And as you can see, you'll see as we go through my collection, we've got some great typicals, we've got some great non-typicals, some freaks. It's just amazing what deer can grow, how some can grow so perfect and some can just explode in all different directions. But this was a found dead deer from Iowa. And we'll step back to the deer on the, on the stands here. This is the Bird Eichstead six pointer. It is the world record six pointer. It's a bull kill from Wisconsin, a little north of Milwaukee. But this is, this deer draws about as much attention as any deer I've ever had, this six pointer. So. Just a great head. Thank you, Bert, for letting me introduce it to the people and show it around the country. I appreciate that. This next deer here, I'll turn them a little bit so we can face it better. This deer was shot in 1982 out of Bemidji, Minnesota. We call him Flex. It's like he's flexing his muscle. And if you want to get in closer here, he's also got a turkey track right there. Um, oh boy he does. Yeah, so it's fun when you get to play with these antlers like I do, you get to find the different things and um, so yeah, it's a, just draws a lot of attention also. This is the King Buck Shed. I'm sure many of you heard about the King Buck, Johnny King's world record whitetail. These are actually his sheds from the year before that score 202, just a giant 5x5. Five five. And this is Legendary Whitetail number three book that has the king buck on the cover and this is the original Johnny King buck. It is the highest scoring typical of all time from anywhere on the planet. There's nothing bigger. There may be some that look bigger but when you add up the numbers there's nothing bigger. <laughs> Interesting part about this, Mr. King decided to shoot it in the back of the ant. Why he did that I don't know but I guess that's what happens when you put young kids in the woods with a gun. <laughs> Just sorry, Johnny, I had to throw that in there to tease you a little bit. But this is the king buck. Many people think that when he shot it, it blew the antler off. It did. The bullet struck the antler. They literally had to dig the lead out of there, and they reinforced it inside. But when Johnny and his cousin were walking up to the deer when it was laying dead, both sides of the antler were intact. Johnny's cousin got there first, straddled the deer, and grabbed it like I am right now, like this, and the deer they thought was dead. Johnny stepped on a twig, the deer opened its eyes, saw Johnny walking up from the front, bucked his cousin off, 
and one of the deer bucked him off. This antler broke in Johnny's cousin's hand. The deer ran away with one antler on it and died shortly after. But just a neat story on a really, really cool deer. Um, we'll move along here. Let's go to this. It's the uh, archery kill from Iowa. Travis Hamilton. We call it the Iowa Freak. As you can see why with all the points thrown in so many different directions. Just a fantastic archery kill. This side right here is one of the strongest, highest scoring single sides on any deer in history. Um, early season bow kill. My thoughts are I'm no expert at this. But if this would have been later in the year during the rut, I would have thought this probably would have got broken up from fighting and, yeah. and whatnot. So just a really, really a neat deer. These are sheds off a of deer from Indiana. I named it the Indiana Legend Sheds. This shed right here alone scores 99 and 6 eighths inches. It is the world's largest five point shed. There's no other shed bigger than it. And this was found in Indiana by a young girl, actually Andrea Moffitt's niece. Andrea Moffitt, the reason I keep saying that name is she found this side the next year she shot the deer. Um, people all ask, did it go downhill? I say, no, it doesn't score as high, but it went from perfect clean 10 to a nine pointer and it threw a non-typical point off of this side. So it absolutely drove down the typical score, but it was still just as big as a house. A lot of people call this an acorn point when they get this on the top. I call this one a bird's head, because if you zoom in, it has an eyeball on the inside and it looks just like a bird's head. So, I, like I say, I get to play with these antlers every day, so I get to find these little, different little niches with them, and, and I enjoy the heck out of doing this stuff. Um, this deer has a very interesting story. This is a black powder kill from Quebec, Canada. Andre Boudreau was the hunter. There was no scoring system in Quebec because they spoke French up there and they had no scores up there and no one to train them in the Boone and Crockett scoring system. Well, after a couple of years, Andre found a, a bilingual scorer from Vermont named Ron Boucher. He brought the deer down into Vermont, they scored it, and Ron was impressed with how much Andre knew about deer. He said, why don't we set up a scoring workshop up there and get you a scoring system? So Ron went up there to a bunch of skulls and antlers and did a workshop with them. And because of this deer, they now have their own record book and a white tail scoring system and mule deer are in moose and stuff. So because of this deer, they now have a scoring system. And the funniest part about that is because of all their efforts, Andre and Ron were invited to go to the Sagamore Hill Museum, Teddy Roosevelt's favorite spot on earth. And they got to score Teddy Roosevelt's last big game animal he ever shot before he quit hunting. It was a moose out of Quebec. From what I understand, it was the second moose he shot on the trip. He had shot one, and as he was dressing it out, the second one charged him and they had to shoot it in self-defense. So these guys got to go to Sagamore Hill and score the last big game animal ever shot by Teddy Roosevelt. See, the deer I have in my collection, they're not all the giants, there, although there are some big ones. I like the history. I like to share the history. There's more than just what the deer grew behind some of these deer. So that, that's a very special animal to me. And, and Andre's a very special, great guy. So very happy with having that. This deer here is on the Iron Range in northern Minnesota. You can see he's got this goofed up eye here. We call him One-Eyed Jack. That eye was fogged over. He was blind in it. And the hunter shot it. and. He went up to it, and this side was sticking out of the snow, this side was down, so he had no idea that was there. He picked it up and said, I don't like this deer, and wanted to get rid of it, and I pounced because I love these freaks. When you can show these freaks with these typicals and understand, these are the same species, and they can grow so different. Um, this one, I'm not exactly sure where it came out of, but we call him arthritis. He just has all these wrinkly little points. I got a mule deer at home, the same thing. A lot bigger, but this is a white tail show, so I left the mule deer behind, so. But yeah, he's just a neat little piece. Um, I let people pick them up. Any deer in my collection is free to, for anybody to pick up, get all the pictures you want. Um, some shows that get so busy, I bring these smaller ones, so people have something to look at as they wait in line to get their pictures taken. and. And I can get kind of windy, as you can see right now. I can talk. <laughs> I just love talking to you. So. But, no, this has been a great time, guys. I appreciate you coming over and letting me explain some of the deer.
We appreciate you. He's aviating. We appreciate you letting us film this. This is going to be super interesting to people that didn't make it to this show. As hunters, we just got to share. Yes. There's too many secrets in the hunting world right now. The more we share and let people know what's out there, and you know, it's just, well, we're all in the family when it comes to hunting, you know, and yeah. I just love doing this.